I'm going to Ken as hard as I can. Fatality. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Wake Up 3. We are your hosts, Molly. And Cam. Like always, we're going to start things off with a mix-up. Today the category is Two Moves and a Lie. So I'm going to give you three special move names for a character and have you tell me which one is the one that I made up. Okay, and would you rate this uh, l- like on a hard level? Um, I don't know. Do you think know. I'm going to survive this mix-up? Be real with me. I think I think it might be a little bit hard. I think it's going to be a difficult one, honestly. Okay. I tried to make it a little bit hard, so we'll see if I can... Let's see if you can survive this mix. All right, I'm, I'm ready for it. So I've got three characters. Let's see if you can get through all three of them here. Okay. First off, Elena, Street Fighter 3. Three moves here. Rhino Horn, Antelope Dash... Lynx tail. Hmm. Rhino horn, antelope dash, lynx tail. I'm gonna go with rhino horn. Rhino horn is real. Oh no. The correct answer for the fake move was antelope dash. Okay. That was hard. I'm down one. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> let's see if you can survive this next one here. Another Street Fighter three character, Urian. Two moves and a lie. Oh, boy. We've got Metallic Sphere, Dangerous Headbutt, and Angry Tussle. I'm trying to think of him. I'm going to go with Angry Tussle. That's right. Yes. Okay. Dangerous Headbutt I'm is proud real. I'm proud of so that. You got Angry Tussle. And last one, another Street Fighter Three character. We've got Hugo, the big wrestler. Oh, great. Should be a hard one. Mega Knee Buster, Meat Squasher, Monster Lariat. Do you hear those again? Yes, I do. <laughs> Mega Knee Buster, Meat Squasher, Monster Lariat. I just, every time that. <laughs> I think you can tell which option I just can't Monster Lariat. believe is real. So I guess I'm going to go with Meat Squasher. That is not right. (gasps) Meat Squasher is a real move. Mix up. Failed. Failed. All right. This week's episode is going to be of the casual variety. We played some old fighters very recently. Some that I have never played in my life. So we're going to talk about those today. Can you guess what they are? Let's get into it. So... Street Fighter, Street Fighter, Street Fighter. Ever since I picked up Street Fighter 6, my very first in the series, I've been hooked. Yeah, and this was a series that I never expected you to get into. I started playing 5 last summer, and you tried to avoid it pretty much at all costs. Was it bad? I mean, it was bad. It Tell him it was bad. I really did not want to touch this game. Yeah, and it was it was just because you had never played any of them in the past, and you already had so many other franchises that you were kind of hooked on. Yeah, you could say I was loaded up with other... <laughs> Jamie, okay. <laughs> with other fighters at the time. I had just gotten into King of Fighters. If you know King of Fighters, that's a lot of characters. Yeah, that's a, a lot, lot of stuff to take in. There's a lot to learn in that game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I actively avoided Street Fighter Five a year ago or so. And it's it's really shocking to me because yeah, you would always <laughs> leave the room if I was playing <laughs> back in the day. But now yeah, Six kind of hooked itself into you. So we decided to go back and play some of the classic games because you've never played any of those, like we said. Let's just talk about them a little bit. Talk about your experience playing. Street Fighter 1, 2, and 3 for the first time in 2023. Going back, they they hold up a lot. Let's talk about 2 first, because that's where we started. First one we played together was Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. We weren't going to start with Street Fighter 2 originally, because when I looked at this screen of games, which one stood out to me? Um, well, Do you remember? We, the first one that stuck out to you was actually Street Fighter 3 
Second impact. I was just judging by the the logos, you know, on the screen. Yep. Just that's that's it. Just face value. That's the one I wanted. And you were like, I don't think so. Yeah, I was just like, what about Super Turbo? I feel like we should play that. You knew of a couple of the classic characters from Street Fighter VI, just the returnees. But yes. Yeah, it's you like didn't... a lot of them. Yeah, it is. It's like nine-ish characters. I think it's nine characters that you knew on the roster. But the other seven, you really didn't know anything about. What did you think of their like first appearances? Because a lot of them are like instantly recognizable. Right. I was immediately impressed by how true to the originals these characters have stayed over the years. Ryu is Ryu, Ken is Ken, Chun-Li is Chun-Li. You always know that. You still get those classic costumes. Classic moves. Classic poses. Cammy's win pose is exactly the same. Yeah. I love Cammy's stage in two. It's well, a cool one. The London stage. Yeah. It's, a cool it's got stage. some northern lights going on in the background, and you're on kind of like a castle wall. Of course, the style of the time lends itself to that as well. Yeah, and it looked a little bit more mystical in general. I feel like a lot of the stages tried to give a lot more of a colorful vibe and just vibrant. A lot of the characters play pretty much identical to the classics today. When I was playing DJ at one point, you were kind of kicking my butt. And then a switch flipped in my brain like, oh yeah, I know how to play DJ at six. And then suddenly it just turned around super quick and you were like, what's happening? Stop me in my tracks. Yeah, we don't even remember who I was playing. I as. It's you were, not you relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. DJ with the, once again, completely recognizable. He's got the skin in Street Fighter Six with the maximum pants. The braids. Yeah. I think you wore green pants and I wore purple. I think so, yeah. Is that what it was? We did DJ versus DJ? No, oh, that no. Was a, that was a later one. Yeah, I picked DJ much later than you because I don't know DJ the way you do. I like DJ. Now, who did you end up choosing first? The very first one I picked, I went with Fei Long, and that was a character I had never played in any Street Fighter game. I just... Thought he looked cool. He had the Bruce Lee vibe, and I wanted to give him a shot. It tried to pick Dalsim for you, and then we had to back out because it got it down so fast, and you didn't want to be him. Oh, I remember who the first one you were. You were Bison first. That's right. I'd never played as M. Bison, and I know he's an iconic character, so I went with him. It was bad. I found out uh, I'm not an M. Bison player, I don't think. Not yet. Not now, anyways. Yeah, no plans to main M. Bison for me after that. Something I really liked about the Street Fighter 2 menu was the little fanfare that you get when you join in as Player 2. I just really loved that. <laughs> I, I feel like every time I made... Because we had to go back. We had like, stuck in arcade mode. We had to keep loading the character select back so i kept joining and i got to hear it several times and yeah. i'm not mad about it i love that sound yeah it was fun so 10 out of 10 for the join sound yep for sure player two i and feel like i feel like for the most part like all the sounds are pretty good i know that one thing you hated was the sound of sagat's moves tiger what did i think he was saying it w i didn't think it was tiger it was something really weird <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember. Iceberg. Iceberg! Yeah, you <laughs> thought he was saying iceberg. God. Yes, he's like, tiger, tiger, I kept hearing tiger. Iceberg, and obviously, iceberg. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of Sagat's entire deal to... he He's a zoner. Even though he doesn't look like it, he's a zoner character. And then when you get close, his goal is to kick you. But, yeah, you know, I'm just blasting off those little tiger shot things over and over. So you like those sound effects. I think I do. Yeah, I kind of do. One that I really don't like is the way the elephants sound in Dalsim stage. I don't think we even went there. We didn't go there, and I'm glad. The elephant was just like such a shrill pitch or mm -hmm. like louder than the rest of the audio or something. But it would like shriek, and it felt like it was so often. 
And I remember being stuck on a stage at one point when I was just playing through the arcade, and I was stuck on that level for so long that I muted it. Wow. Yeah, so I'm actually glad we didn't see that one. What else can we say about two? How do we feel about it? Well, which characters do you think you enjoyed playing the most out of two? The characters that I didn't recognize were the more interesting ones for me. Probably my favorite fighter that I played in two was... I can't remember his name. (laughs) (laughs) The guy with the claws. Oh, Vega. Vega. That's right. That was a shock to me because... I I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that was just kind of a shock to me. He's kind of a weird character. How so? Well, he I know that in five he his claw can actually fall off and you can <laughs> lose access to certain moves. Why did they do that? Uh You I, can't tell me. Okay. I don't really know. I I don't have an answer for that. I know that he's kinda of unique. He's even unique in Street Fighter Two. He has his own stage that has like a fence in the background and he can climb up it. And then just, like, climb around on the stage over you, left, right, whatever. Oh, my God. It's like Bowser's Castle. Yeah, it looks just like that. And then he can jump, and he can do jump attacks off of the fence. So it makes him from, like, whatever tier he would normally be to, like, ridiculous tier. Wow. And I'm pretty sure that is, like, banned in tournaments. Really? Because it's, like, not fair. Oh, the stage itself? Like, doing that on the stage, if you were to get on that stage. Because I don't know if there's a way to select stages on that. There probably is at this point. Okay. All I know is that, like, it kind of turns Vega into some bullshit. We never really got the chance to fight on that stage or anything. Yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of surprised a little bit when you went with him. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Because Molly has a history of kind of gravitating towards, like, fancy boy type characters in fighting games. For Tekken, it's Lee. For King of Fighters, it's Benny Mario. So I should have expected this, I guess. It just flew under my radar for some reason. I must have been able to see that he has those claws because... He has one claw. I thought he had two in that game. One regular. Two hand. for Street Fighter 2. One claw. Oh, there's one. Damn it. Damn it. Terrible, Damn. terrible. <laughs> God. Jesus. Oh. I must have seen that claw because... Well, I didn't grow up playing fighters. I did grow up playing an inordinate amount of Dynasty Warriors. And there is also a fancy boy in Dynasty Warriors who uses claws. That's funny. He was always a favorite of mine. He was actually like my best friend's go-to dude. So when we would play together, she would always be him and I would be somebody else and we would just tear shit up. But anyways, that was what drew me in because I was like, oh, a claw, you say? That's a good weapon. (laughs) Don't mind if I do. Yeah, and when I play this, I'm like, he has like a lot of really fun specials that remind me of other fighters, and it was just fun. I feel like from the very first time you played Vega, you were like, oh yeah, this guy's, this is it. This guy's cool. Oh yeah, I was very impressed. He was probably my my standout for that game. I think I had the most fun playing as DJ, and one thing that really surprised me I really enjoyed Cammy in Street Fighter 2. I've just never really been a Cammy player in any way, but when I played her in 2, it felt natural, and I felt like I was just going nuts. Yeah, I can't remember who I played against your Cammy either. I don't know, but I feel but like... But I think I got destroyed as well. When in doubt, Spiral Arrow. <laughs> so we spent just a little bit of time in 2. Good times. Good stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It didn't end there. Third Strike. Yes. You primed me for this one by letting me know this game switches things up. This game, a lot of people weren't on board at the time because it was so different. It was a divisive one for sure. And then not only that, it didn't release on home consoles until PS2. So it was like years after it had already come out in the arcades. So for a long time, a lot of people didn't even know about it because it may not have been a super popular arcade cabinet. Anyway, And why wasn't it popular? It had pretty much all new characters. The only recognizable characters in the beginning were Ryu and Ken, and then by the end, when Third Strike came out, they also had Akuma and Chun-Li. But those are the only four classic characters that make it to Third Strike. Everybody else is brand new. 
So with the warning, I kind of like was thinking like, I'm worried. Like, am I going to dislike it? No, no, no. I loved this game. Yeah. And I think I told you beforehand, like, this is my favorite one. No, you didn't. No. I didn't even know that you li- like. I couldn't tell from your warning okay. that you liked the game okay. either. So I really had no gauge. I already knew this one was my favorite. I actually played this one a couple of years ago on PlayStation Plus. I played that one a bit there, and I thought like this one's really cool. This is it. I tried telling you like Street Fighter Three Third Strike is really cool, and you were like, yeah, but you know. Blah, blah, blah. I've already got too many games I'm into. Don't need another one. Something like that. Yeah, at that time, I was probably like, yeah, but look what Lars can do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lars can do the home improvement sound. <laughs> Who else can say that? Mm-hmm. Who else can do that? <laughs> yeah, but I had already kind of made up my mind like this one. I love this one. There's something different about it. So, upon first opening Street Fighter 3, first thing you notice is it's purple. And the music and is way different. Yes. The roster setup was not ready for that either. When we first opened the roster for this game, the first thing that you said was, what in the hell? Was that what I said? Yeah, I remember. I just remember that very vividly because, I mean, the art style is super different. The music is bump in and it's super different and then the layout of it is like vertical and everybody's in little circles this is the wildest looking roster i've i may have ever seen the setup is just unheard of they definitely did something different with it and once again being the player too when you join the screen you can't anticipate what happens it smushes over and you appear I didn't expect the entire roster to shift to the middle. So yeah, right off the bat, extreme differences. I can totally understand how that would have been. A very intense change at the time. Yeah, definitely. Do you remember who you picked first? I was drawn to Yurian. And you chose... I chose Necro. Had you played him before? I had played him a little bit like four years ago when I first tried this game out but not really since was there a reason you wanted to play him first i just think he's kind of cool i like his sounds i like his color scheme he's just like wearing purple i think there's a subconscious reason is it is there yes what do you think it is if you squint when you look at necro look past the sad face he's a bald white-headed man with red marks on his face, it's Quan Chi. Holy shit. Yeah, that might be <laughs> it. Like, oh, I like this weird, sad, bigger version of Quan Chi. I thought he was pretty cool, though. And I like the sounds that he makes. Going into the first fight, I was very impressed immediately with how smooth this game feels. Did you want to talk about your very first reaction to uh, Yurian when he joined the fight? For me at this point, I'm thinking costume selection is an integral part of Street Fighter, and it is very important. We get into the very first fight with Urian and Necro. They get ready to start round one. Boom! That's gone. What outfit? Who cares what you just picked? Because it's gone. Urian rips that shit off. Yeah, he just busted his clothes off. Frame one. It's gone. Yeah, and then from there, you were just fighting in a thong. Wow, did I not expect that. At all. Yeah, you were shocked. He's pretty cool, I like him. And you ended up winning that one. And of course, yeah, that energy that that you have at the beginning of the fight where he just rips off everything that he's wearing. I love that. You, (laughs) you, You had to know that I was going to love that. Yeah, that's something I didn't tell you about. Yeah. Going into it. Love that I think energy. That's hilarious. He just flexes and like his clothing goes <laughs> to shreds. It's great. Something in me decided to try out twelve. He's like a pool of goo. He can just transform into anything. Twelve's like a white blobby boy. It could have gone either way. Yeah, he's a blobby boy. <laughs> he's just a big <laughs> white blobby boy. He doesn't have a face. He was fun. Probably one of the weirdest uh, character portraits that pops up on the side when you hover over. Is Hugo. 
Oh man, yeah, he does look pretty. Weird, you're like looking he? up his nose. Yeah, he's just a huge guy. This guy's something else. Yeah, he's huge. He's real big. You played as him. Did you like him? He was pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like I hit you with a couple of his wrestling moves, like some of his grapples. Not quite as many as I would have liked, but you know, I don't really know how to play the dude. He's not your type, right? I don't think he would be someone I would play long term. That's for sure. I think I liked what he gave to the game, you know what I mean? Like what he offers. I don't think he's really my style, but I did think he was kind of a cool character. Did he feel like any other Street Fighter characters? Well, the only reason I could nail his grapples is because I was trying to mimic Zangief moves. Mm. So I just thought like, I'll just do some, you know, some full circles and see what I can do (laughs) here. Um, And I was able to get a couple of those off just because of that. They're definitely different, but yeah, I just thought, like, I know how grapplers play in these games. Let's give it a shot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, just from, like, the towering stature, I would say Abigail from Five. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Just a huge, just real big, huge character that's kind of slow, but just, like, really, like, they have a lot of impact behind their hits. Yeah. I've never played Zangief, but I've seen him. I play six. Yeah. I've seen him. <laughs> yeah, so he had that sort of vibe, just like kind of a mixture of like Zangief and Abigail to me. But mm-hmm. I don't think he's... I didn't vibe with him too hard because that's not really my style. I like really fast characters. I love Rushdown. There was one character that clicked with me when we were playing. Ibuki, the ninja character. I loved her. Like, like the second I found her, I loved her. I said, whoa. Look, this game already feels real nice to play, really really smooth, really buttery. Ibuki, another level. She feels so fluid, so fast. She sold me on it. I I mean, just from that, I I would love to see her return in 6 cuz I was feeling I was feeling myself when I was playing her. I had heard of Yoon and Yang. Jamie has inherited moves from both of them, we'll say. I had to see what that was all about. And they were fun. I yeah. liked both of them. Yeah. Yeah, they were cool. I first tried Yang. I thought, I don't want to wear the hat. <laughs> Something yeah. about the hat just throws it off for me. <laughs> yeah, you just weren't feeling the hat. So I started with Yang. And then yeah. we ended up doing a, a Yoon and Yang fight where I tried Yoon. You played Yang. Right off the bat, you are like, I prefer the palm strike that Yoon offers. Yeah. And then you just went off. I did. Honestly, I went, I went you ate hard. your words because you were feeling Yang by the end of it, I think. I really was. And I was feeling Yoon. Yeah. I think they're both fun. They both are, yeah. I was just kind of thinking, like, whenever I play Jamie, like, the very little amount that I do play Jamie, <laughs> I love doing that palm strike move. It's, like, it's that's, a great move. I that's, understand. That's my thing. I and mean, you're more about the kicks, so I feel like it made sense from, like, the get-go. Like, yeah, I'm going to like the guy with the kicks. Plus, you didn't like the hat, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought they were both pretty cool. I don't know which one I would prefer at this point, actually. Yeah, I almost feel like that's the goal with these two characters. You're not supposed to be able to pick a favorite. Yeah, they complement And that's each probably other why well. they ended up just making Jamie. So you just mentioned kicks, and <laughs> there was a character on the roster that I did not expect at all. I didn't end up picking this character till probably halfway through our time playing. This wasn't even my first pick, not even my fifth pick. I feel like it was kind of random when you chose her, and it was just like, all right, I'll give her a shot. I haven't tried her out. You were like losing your mind. You're like, whoa, look at all these kicks. This is great. Oh my God. You love kicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's your thing. I like punches. You like kicks. I can't not overstate this. I fell in love with this character immediately. If she's in six, look out, Jamie. Look out. Because I was obsessed right off the bat with Elena. Yeah. Like, by the end of the first round, you were, like, ranting and raving. Like, you might as well have been standing up, like, shouting into the ether. Like, this is great. I love this. This is such a good character. This is my shit. (laughs) (laughs) that was definitely the most exciting character for me yeah it was fun to see that reaction from you (laughs) two months ago you were like i don't care about street fighter (laughs) 
it's just wild. Yeah. It's wild to yeah. see the turnaround. I really wasn't sure what to expect from the character select for her because she's just got short white hair, like bright white hair. Some jewelry, like some necklaces, yeah. I feel like you can see. It was giving me like Atlantis vibes from the, from the character select with the just the white bright hair. But man, oh man, I was not prepared at all for what she was capable of. She's so cool. She is. I was just ripping through the screen. I was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if Elena ever comes back for Street Fighter Six, I guess look out world because... You're going to be going real hard. Yeah, she was a big standout character for me. Who else stood out for you, Cam? I thought Q was really cool. He stood out to me. I like that he was a robot in a trench coat. That just fit my vibe, I guess. And then I loved his super. I love that it was just a self-destruct. That was the one I chose anyways. I just couldn't really shy away from that one. I also really liked Makoto. I thought all of her hits just seemed like they were like really powerful. Like there was a lot of impact behind them. Yeah, I think she was a fun addition as well. That was my first exposure to her. I've heard of her in recent times, getting into more Street Fighter these days. She was a fun, fresh addition, I would say. Yeah, for sure. And this was my first time ever playing her because I've never played four. Okay. But uh, I would love to see her in six, so maybe bring Makoto back. Maybe it's time to see her again. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd love that. We also played a matchup early on that was actually my first time playing a Shoto character. You chose Akuma because you were really excited to play as Akuma. I feel like you had a, a special interest in Street Fighter Three Akuma. Am I right? Yeah, for sure. I played him in Alpha, and I thought he was great in that, in Alpha 2 and 3. But, yeah, I hadn't really tried him out in Third Strike at all, so I was looking forward to that. And I ended up kind of getting my butt kicked against you. Wasn't the standard pick. It wasn't Ryu or Ken. I chose Sean, actually, as my <laughs> first Shoto character. Yeah, I actually thought he was kind of fun. Like, a diff a slightly different take on it. Yeah, for sure. Like, he doesn't have the standard fireball or anything like that. Right. He does but... have a fun little role, though. Yeah, that was cool. That reminded me of King of Fighters. Mm-hmm. Do you think it would be cool to see him return, or do you think it's likely? I don't know how likely it is, yeah. because this is the only one he's been in, actually. He never made it to four or five. Wow. So but... they really just dropped him. <laughs> yeah. So probably not likely to see him but for some reason that ended up being my very first shoto character that i tried yeah so there's that for the record <laughs> and yeah i actually ended up beating your akuma but later on we had a matchup where i was akuma and i kind of felt that i don't know if akuma's like mid tier or lower tier in three but i felt backed up against the wall when i played yeah um... but maybe that was for another reason I have an idea as to what that could have been about. I was Ken during that matchup, and like halfway through the first round, I said, I'm going to Ken as hard as I can. And from then on, for the whole rest of the match, I just started doing only special moves and all the time, regardless of where I was on the screen. So <laughs> I would be like full screen and just throw out a sure you can. Or right in your face and throw a fireball. Just, I'm going to Ken as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> and that stupid unpredictability just made it so I was able to beat you because I wasn't really trying to do spacing. I was just trying to do hits, you know what I mean? Yeah, you just shut off your brain and Kenned. I Kenned as hard as I could and it worked. <laughs> Winning with Ken. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I <laughs> All I had going for me was that Akuma looks pretty cool in this game. I mean, when does he not, though, really? Yeah, I... Akuma fans, what's up? Akuma fans, rise up. Yeah. But I guess that takes care of pretty much all of our standouts in the game. I think yeah. so. I think so. I am looking forward to... I mean, I always like Akuma. I am looking forward to him coming out next spring for yeah. Street Fighter VI. I am very excited for that. Mm-hmm. Do we have anything else to say about three other than we just absolutely love it? We will definitely be playing three a lot more 
Oh yeah, I plan on playing 3 a ton at this point. I loved Third Strike from like the moment I saw it. And I thought all of the new characters in it were just like really cool and unique. And yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about it again. You mentioned tier lists. Maybe we'll make a little tier list of our own at some point. It wouldn't be a complete trip to the beginning of Street Fighter without experiencing what I know now is pretty much just a joke. But before I tried it out, I thought you kind of have to experience Street Fighter, the very first one. You warned me that no one takes this seriously. You said no one plays this game. And before we played it, I said no one? Really? Like no one? I really couldn't believe you because I'm coming from the background of like Mortal Kombat where people play Mortal Kombat. Right. Still, like that's that's valid. So to me... Hearing you say no one plays Street Fighter, I just didn't believe it until I experienced it. Yeah, I told you that the controls were kind of jank. When you put in a special move, about 80% of the time, the input is just going to get lost. That's you, still, you still weren't ready for it. Like, no, the, I wasn't. The input always gets lost. Like, that's just how it is. Good luck throwing out a, you know, even just a simple fireball or anything. It's just the input gets eaten. We had just finished playing three with the Ken versus Akuma fight, and we went into Street Fighter, and I said, all right, well, this time I'm going to be Ken. And you responded with, you actually don't have a choice. Yeah, you're player two. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's Ken. <laughs> so yeah, you don't have a choice. We pop in there as were you and Ken, and it is terrible. Yeah. Immediately, I'm just laughing. Like, this is so bad. When you're in the air, it's... Whoa! Like, just the physics are all over. Yeah, it's... It's some jank fighting, for sure. But, I mean, it laid the groundwork for what came after it. And even though it only had two playable characters, just Ryu and Ken, it still started somewhere. One thing, when I was looking through the concept art, I noticed there is some artwork of Ken with four toes on one foot. Oh. Yeah, and I just thought that was really funny. You came in the room at one point, and I just, like, zoomed in on that picture and just said, four toes. <laughs> and you were like, God, you just walked away. Yeah, not the thing you want to walk into. <laughs> so You don't want any room to be like that, I think. Yeah, I'll share that on the Twitter page. Sounds good. So look forward to four toes, Ken. <laughs> Hashtag four toes. I think that pretty much covers Street Fighter 1. Now, we've got to round everything out with a lot of announcements. Yeah, there is a ton of stuff going on this weekend. First off, we've got San Diego Comic-Con this weekend. It starts Friday the 21st. Yep, and then same day, the Tech and Closed Network test also goes live. So make sure you're checking your emails for that if you signed up for it to see if you got into it. The codes should have been sent out yesterday at this point. That's just session one of two, actually. Session two will be the following week. That's going to start the 28th. So if you're on Xbox PC, it'll be starting the 28th and I think also just a second round in general. So, And then the news just keeps coming. We've got Rashid blowing in on Monday, the 24th. We've seen a lot of new footage of Rashid released over the week, and he is looking really exciting. I think he's got a lot of buzz going right now. He is looking very good. I am guessing he's going to be top tier when he comes out. Oh, yeah. He barely spends any time on the ground. Yeah. And then finally, we just saw the trailer for Nodged. She's coming to King of Fighters 15. Just says this summer. They didn't give a specific date yet, but her trailer's out. That released on Monday. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. She looks pretty cool. She does. She looks real cool. That brings us to the end of this week's episode of Wake Up 3. Thanks so much for listening. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at WakeUp3FGC. And you can find me, Molly, on Twitter at Concut. That's K-A-H-N-K-U-T. Or on PlayStation, that's Jam Michaels. And you can find me, Cam, on Twitter or PlayStation at Big Rock Online. This is Wake Up 3, 
signing off. Bye. Jacuma. <laughs>